Greetings, friend. In Greek mythology, Zagreus is the name of the son of Zeus and Persephone. He is the protagonist of the video game Hades, which puts you in the underworld in order to find your mom, Persephone, who's down there. Zagreus is also the name of this classic Sudoku by the T-Rex. Not only will I give you three amazing tips about Sudoku empty rectangles as I solve this puzzle, but I'll also share some fun facts about my Friday featured setter. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, to get started in this puzzle, we're going to look and see if we can solve any cells. You have two ones here in columns one and two and a one right here, which means there's only two places for a one here in block four. So what I'm doing is Snyder notation anytime in a three by three block. You only have two possibilities for a candidate. You'll mark that and in case you solve one cell, you can solve the other right away. It also will give us some views about advanced strategies that we can use. All right, with this, these two ones and this one, only two places for a one here in block eight. And now with this one coming up, this one cutting across, there's only two places for one here in block six, but it also becomes a pointing pair. And what that means is since the ones are limited to column eight here in block six, they point up and no other ones can be anywhere along column eight because they have to be somewhere here in block six. So these cannot be ones and since you have a one here already, the only two places left for a one up here in block three is right there. So we can mark the Snyder notation for those ones. And that's all the ones we're going to be able to mark with Snyder. All right, with the twos, you got this two coming down. It leaves only two places for a two here in block five. And that is all we can do with the twos. We look at the threes. We got these two threes and this three, two spots for three right here. There's three spots for a three here in block six because of this three and this three. I'm not going to mark that. And then you got two spots for a three down here in block eight because of the three in the column five and then these two threes. All right, moving on to the fours. We have four, four, three fours here in the middle. Can we make any marks with the fours? Uh, nope. But what I do notice is there's only two places for a four here in row three. In fact, there's only two candidates left, which makes this a naked pair four, six. I will mark that. I feel like this is gonna be the key to the puzzle. I think the T-Rex put this here for you to look at it because there's some power in having this naked pair cover these two blocks. I'll explain that here in just a little bit. I don't see anything else with the fours. We go to the fives and with these two fives and this five, we can mark two places for a five, nice. And then with this five and this five cutting across, there's only two places for a five right here, which makes them a pointing pair, which means a five cannot be in this spot, but there's three places for a five here. I'm not gonna mark that because I'm only marking the Snyder notation. Okay, with the sixes, it looks like we can actually do a solve. With these two sixes, you can solve a six right there. Nice. And now it puts some restrictions in the remaining cells. It looks like you have a five coming down here, the two here and the seven here. So now the sevens are limited to these two spots. The fives are limited to these two spots. It makes a nice, and I'll mark them. It makes a nice naked triple of all by by cells. And that is okay. So we'll mark all those cells because usually this is will lead you to advanced strategies. Uh, hopefully this gives us a cue of what we need to solve, where the restrictions are in this puzzle. And if you wanna get more great puzzles from setters like this, I have for my Smarty Party members, uh, monthly reward puzzle packs. You can click on the pinned comment below to get that. This month is by Florian Wortman. It's all based on Zodiac signs. It's amazing and you will love it. All right. After doing this, there's nothing else we can do with the sixes as far as scenario notation goes. With the sevens, I see these two sevens. I made these marks. That's all I can do. The eights, we only have two places for an eight right here. 
And with these two eights, only two places for an eight right there. I don't see anything else I can do. Oh, okay, I got two places for eight right there and block eight. Not much there. And then with the nines, I see these two nines and this nine. So we actually have, you see how the eight and nine are limited to the same two squares? This is actually an eight, nine hidden pair. And this is nice. What it means is you think other candidates could be in here, but since the eight and the nine are limited to the same two cells here in block six, they form a hidden pair. And so no other candidates can be in there. That's going to be a little helpful for us. Anything else I can do with the nines? Nope, that's it. What you notice, we've only solved one cell. We've gone through all the candidates and we've not really made that much progress. So this is going to be my first amazing tip about empty rectangles. The first amazing tip is that an empty rectangle is a single candidate strategy and it relies on a conjugate pair. All right. And I always say when you get to this point, this means this puzzle has got a, a little bit harder of a break in because we haven't been able to do more than one solve. You need to start looking for those single candidate strategies. The thing that caught my eye is these two cells right here. I feel like this is what the T-Rex is wanting you to focus on. So what is a, I mentioned conjugate pair. What that means is anytime you have two of a candidate in a house, that's a conjugate pair. And it can be, and what it means is, you know, either this cell right here is a four. If it's not a four, then this cell will be a four. So the fours in these two cells are a conjugate pairs. They work together, either one's a four or the other is a four. Same thing with the six. You know, either this is a six, if it's not a six, then this would be a six. So they form a conjugate pair. They they feed off the other. Well, you've solved one of these cells, you're going to be able to solve the other one. A conjugate pair, you know, exists here with these ones. So like, you know, either that's a one or that's a one. With these eights, with these fives, any of these Snyder notation marks, those are also conjugate pairs. And then conjugate pairs also work within a cell. So whenever you have a bivalent cell, a BVC as I call it, either it's going to be a four or a six. So the four and a six are a conjugate pair with each other. So either this is a four or it's a six. It can't be any other choice. So they kind of complement each other. It's going to be one or the other. You know, one cell or the other, one value in the cell or the other value. That's what conjugate pair means. Empty rectangles have to have one of those. So we're going to focus a little bit more on that. And we're going to start looking at the single candidates that we can do with fours and sixes. So let's look at where the fours can be. All right, if I was to color in where all the fours could be, I'd go right here, I'd go right here, go right there, finish up, I already colored those fours. Go right there, here, and here. All right, that's where all the fours can be, are in the orange squares. So now we're looking for empty rectangle shapes. And this is my second tip for you. Amazing tip about empty rectangles. And the second tip is this. An empty rectangle refers to the shape that's within a block. And you have to be able to cut through all the possibilities for that candidate using exactly one column and cut through with one row. If you can do that, then you have what's called an empty rectangle shape. Well, if you notice right here in block one, I can cut through one column, but there's nothing I can do to cut through one row in addition to the column, right? I can't, I'd have to use two cuts in the rows. If I go this column, I gotta use two cuts for these rows. You know, it doesn't work. I can cut through this row, but then I gotta cut through two columns. Even though it's a nice looking Tetris shape, it's not an empty rectangle shape. We can't use that. Same thing over here, this is just the inverse. Can't use that. You can see this. You know, you can do one column, but then you're, you are you got to cut through three rows. And the same thing, you cut through one row, but then you, you know, you got to do two columns to, to cover all the candidates, all those colored candidates in that block. So this is not an em empty rectangle shape as well. All right. This up here is an empty rectangle shape. We can cut through block two using one row and one column. So row one and column four will cover all these candidates. So then the other thing you have to do is you gotta see if it, if you go outside the block, if you're gonna hit a conjugate pair of that candidate. So if we come out here in the row and you hit this cell, well, this is not a conjugate pair 
because there's three possibilities in column two. Same thing, if you come out this way, you got three possibilities in column eight. One, two, three. So that won't work. If you come down the column, you'll notice no matter which one of these cells you hit, there's multiples in the row. There's no conjugate pairs in these rows. So even though this is an empty rectangle shape, it doesn't lead to an empty rectangle. All right, let's go down here. Look at this shape here. All right, it's not connected. It doesn't have to be connected. But we can cut through it with exactly one column in one row. We can cut through all the possibilities of block seven. So this is an empty rectangle shape. Does it lead us to a conjugate pair? So, and I call this slice and dice. So slice and dice. You go over here, none of these lead to a conjugate pair going across the row. But if we come up the column and you hit this, this is a conjugate pair. And I'll highlight it. And this is good stuff. All right, so now what you can do is you come back down, you went up the column, you come back down to where the row meets the cell here. So you see how the row cuts across, it meets this cell. This is the target cell. This is the cell where we can make an elimination. And this is awesome, all right? We came up the column, we hit a conjugate pair, and now we came back down to where it meets the row. And we can remove a four from this cell. What all can be in here? It can be a four, six, or a seven. And you're going, okay, why can I remove a four from this cell? And it's simple. If a four is in one of these cells, let's say a four is right there, then this would be a six, and that'd be a four, and this cannot be a four, right? The other possibility, it could be here, same thing would happen, or it's gonna be in the row. If a four is in the row, this can't be a four. That's why we can remove a four from here, because whether a four is in these two cells or this cell, a four will never be in this cell. This is awesome. That's our first empty rectangle. And now you're going, Tim, like, first? Yeah, this is going to be great stuff. I love what the T Rex did here. All right? Because we're not done. In fact, we're not even done with the fours yet. And this is, we're going to bring us up to our third amazing tip about empty rectangles. And so our third tip, a empty rectangle is a little bit more powerful than other single candidate strategies. And what I mean by that is sometimes you can solve a particular cell like we did using a Findex wing, a skyscraper, or an empty rectangle. All those will end up being able to solve that. In this case, none of those other strategies apply. You cannot use a Findex wing. There are no skyscrapers, but you can use this empty rectangle to make this solve. And that's why I say it's a little bit more powerful. Many times it can be used in place of other strategies. So awesome. There's your three amazing tips. And this is why I like, we're not done with the fours. Okay, so I showed you this was an empty rectangle shape. Over here, even though we removed the four from here, we still have an empty rectangle shape here in block nine. Because exactly one column or one row goes through it and one column. And we know going this way, we're not going to hit a conjugate pair. But if we go up the column, we hit this conjugate pair right here. And then we come back down to where it meets the row. So the row coming here, this cell right here, which could be a 4, 6, or 9, we can remove a 4 from there. So we have another empty rectangle. I love what the T-Rex did. Two empty rectangles removing two cannons. And we're not done. I, this is going to be amazing. It's going to blow your mind when you see this. So now we've reduced both these cells to bi-value cells, which is very helpful for us. Usually that will lead us to more advanced solving. But I said, we're not done with those empty rectangles. There's a theme here. And I told you the two, the conjugate pairs, you got the fours, and we also have the sixes. We need to start looking at the sixes and see what can we do with this puzzle. All right. Now, where can the sixes be here? You probably notice there's a lot of similarities with the fours. You had three fours in the middle three rows. Well, we also have three sixes in the middle three rows. So let's do all this. Of where sixes can be. All right. And let's see here. We know this cannot be empty rectangle shape. We know this can't be, right? You cut through with two columns and two rows won't work. Nope, no good here, no good here. We got these two shapes that look pretty good. 
Let's find our conjugate pair. There it is. All right, let's try over here and block nine first. Okay, we can come up the column, hit the six, go over the six, come on down where it meets the row, and look at that. We can eliminate a six from right there, right? Because we know either a six is here, and that would be a six, or a six is one of these two cells, which make this a four, that'd be a six, and you can eliminate a six from right there. Awesome. All right, so we're going to eliminate the six from right there. But we're not done. Can we go in reverse like we did with the fours? And the answer is yes. You can come up this column, hit this conjugate pair, come back down to where it meets the row, which is row seven. And look at that. There's a six right there that we can eliminate. All right. So we did it. Now you see there's only one value left in both of these cells. So we use double empty rectangles for two candidates to make some solves. We're going to be able to make some progress here. Before I get to that, I do want to share my fun fact about my Friday featured setter. I asked the T-Rex, what got you into setting Sudoku puzzles? His response, pretty typical. It was, he was a fan of Cracky the Cryptic. He was in the Discord server. He even watched the Miracle Sudoku a little while before he actually started setting puzzles. But then he got fascinated about classics. He does a lot of variants, but I've featured many of his classics on this channel. And he said he didn't know a lot of the advanced strategies, but then he learned about unique break-ins from setters like Keen Lux and Shy, which are uh, setters I've featured many times before, and they have some great break-ins. And that got him super excited about classics. Well, I gotta tell you, the break-in here is just outstanding. I loved it that you had to work this empty rectangle twice, two different candidates to get progress. So symmetrical, so beautiful. And if you just wanna learn more about empty rectangles, Check out my empty rectangle tutorial and subscribe to Smart Hobbies. You won't miss any new content. Okay, let's get rid of these colors and let's make some solves happen. He may not be out of the woods yet, so we got to see what we can do. We know that this now has to be a 9 and this has to be a 7. Okay, let's look over here in block 7. But you'll notice now we have some restrictions going on. So you got a 1, 2, 3 four, five, six, and a nine. So that means this has to be a seven or an eight. Well, I got my eight right there. So here's your seven and there's your eight. Okay, after that, let's follow these eights up because we're gonna remove that Snyder mark. We can solve for an eight right there. I call that displacing the Snyder. After so solving the eight right there, we're gonna be able to displace this Snyder eight and solve for an eight right here in block eight. Nice. All right, after that, let's look here cross row nine okay we have a one five seven eight nine we need a two three four six well, if you look right here you got a two three and a six we know this actually has to be a four so we can solve that cell for a four and now with this four cutting across and this four coming down we can solve for a four right here in block nine and then we can cut with these two four solve for a four right here. And now we're going to be able to finish up block seven with a six. Nice. And now we have this six here. We can actually solve for our four and our six. We figured out what that conjugate pair is. Awesome. All right. After doing the four and the six there, we can follow along and solve the six coming down here it means this has to be a six. So we're looking good. This is going to end up being a two, three, down there, I'll just make that mark. All right, after solving the fours and the sixes, we can look here and go, what can be in this cell, right? We have a two, four, six, seven, nine. We need a one, three, five, and eight. Well, I have a one, three, eight here, so this actually has to be your five. All right, and with these two fives, we can solve for five right there. And this is gonna restrict us to a two, nine up here in block one. And then we can solve for a six right there. Cool. And what else can we do with the fives? Well, you look right here, we need a two and a five. I see a two there. So this has to be your two, which displaces that Snyder five. We can solve for that five. Looking good. All right. And let's look across row seven. We just need a six and a nine. I got a six here. So here's your six, here's your nine. All right. Let's look across here. Looks like we need a one, five, seven to finish block eight. I got a one and a five here. So this has to be your seven. 
and then we can solve this for the two, solve that for the five, solve that for the seven right there, looking good. And now there's no place for five here except right there in block eight, and that's got to be your one. We can come up, we can finish this column with a one there, which displaces this Snyder one, and we can solve a one right there. All right, after making all those solves, we got this two, means that this has to be your three, and that's going to be your two. All right, making more restrictions. Looks like we need four and a nine up here. So I'll mark the four and a nine. And then it looks like we need a three and a six here. Well, I got my six. So here's your six, and here's your three. And now with this three cutting across and this three, you can solve for three right there. And there's your three in the corner, losing its religion. All right, only one candidate left in column nine, so that's got to be your seven. With these two sevens and this seven, we can solve this for a seven. And then we have two candidates left. Looks like a two and a nine. I got my nine here, so here's your nine. And there's your two. With these twos, this has to be a two right there. And then uh, with this nine, this is going to be the eight, nine, disambiguate, the eight, nine, hidden pair. All right, looking good. Uh, we come across, we don't have a three yet, so that's got to be your three. Get rid of that three mark. We're looking for a one and an eight. I got my eight here. So to finish block four, there's your eight. There's your one. Displacing this Snyder one. So there's your one right there. All right, we are making great progress. This has got to be a three. That's got to be a five. Looking good. Okay, and then we come up. I'm going to always go for the full house first. This has got to be your two, which allows us to disambiguate this two nine and this four nine. Awesome. We got two candidates left. One of them's got to be a four. I see a four right here. So here's your four. And the last cell is a seven. I didn't have time in this video to show you all the empty rectangle shapes that you will see. Check out this other video to see some more of them. I want to thank the T-Rex so much for being my Friday featured setter. You are amazing. Please consider supporting me on my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching.